Good morning. It is a blessing to see and to worship with each and every one of you. My friends, welcome to Ridgewood Park United Methodist Church. We are streaming to you from the heart of Dallas, Texas, and we are excited to gather together on this fourth Sunday of Advent. We have a few announcements coming your way. On Christmas Eve, we will have both an in-person worship and a live streamed, a streamed service throughout that day. It's actually going to be a recorded service that will be uh, uploaded and available at your, at however your calendar permits for you and your family to join together in worship. And that will, that will be uploaded that day. Uh, the in-person service will be here on the steps of our sanctuary facing Lover's Lane beginning at 5.30 p.m. We invite you, if you can, please worship online and be safe. We also have a youth event coming up this week, Christmas Movie Night. For all of you who love the movie Elf, which I do, this is your opportunity to join Dylan and the rest of our youth at 6 p.m. It's going to be online through Zoom, and it, you, you will receive that link in the coming days. But there's going to be games, there's going to be prizes, and it's a way for us to connect one another even though we are experiencing some very difficult days as we see this pandemic, the cases of COVID-19 rise in our community. Well, let me just say, I saw an article in the Dallas Morning News about Christmas being canceled. Christmas is not canceled. Christmas is never canceled. My friends, we are here. We are together. We are united, and in a darkened night, we are pointing toward the star in Bethlehem that Jesus is born into our world, into our hearts, and into our lives. So my friends, let us celebrate that good news in a hurting world, and let us prepare our hearts and our minds to worship God together. Please stand and join me in the opening hymn to a maid engaged to Joseph. We will sing verses 1, 2, 5, and 6.
what are these candles for? This is an Advent wreath. There are five candles that remind us of God's love in Jesus Christ. We light a new candle each Sunday from now until Christmas as we wait for the birth of Christ in our lives and in our world. Today, we light the candle of joy. We light this candle to proclaim the coming of the light of God into the world. With the coming of this light, there is joy. Joy that is ours not only at Christmas, but always. I invite you now to join me in our call to worship. If you will read what you find in bold there in your bulletin. For the caring heart and the listening ear, for the overlooked and the underappreciated, Lord, give them joy. For those who serve us, teach us, and protect us. For those who care for us, tend our wounds and heal us. Lord, give them joy. For the sick and the suffering, for those who feel alone and are so very weary of social distancing, Lord, give them joy. For those that will find reasons to doubt, for those who worry, who are fearful, who have been hurt, Lord, give them joy. May the joy that Christ brings strengthen us, enliven us, and fill us with hope, peace, joy, and love. Lord, give us joy. Amen. And I invite you, as you are seated, to join me in the reading of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please, if you'll join me in prayer. Dear God, our Creator, as we gather here in joyful communion with each other, we ask that you give us peace. We know that there are hardships in this world and that there are those who have troubles on their heart and in their lives. But we ask that you find it in you and in us to give them joy this Christmas season. As we celebrate the birth of your son, Jesus Christ, we ask that you continue to guide us in the way of your will so that your joy, your peace, your love, and the hope you give to each and every one of us might be felt by your children. For we understand that our purpose here is to be joyful with you and with each other. And as we continue in all of this, we say that prayer that your son taught us as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
I find myself this year observing Advent in this season approaching Christmas in a very different way than I ever have in my life. Have you? I, I've never quite heard that song in the way that I heard it this morning. In the bleak midwinter. It kind of surrounds us this morning and reminds us of where we find ourselves in a bleak midwinter. As we observe these themes of Advent, the common themes of peace, hope, love, and joy, I find myself reflecting on them much differently than I ever have before. Because this is an Advent like we have never experienced before. Let me ask you, where do you find your joy? What brings you joy? I invite you to share that in the comments section of our worship video right now. Share that. Where do you find joy? What brings you joy in your life? Do you find joy? Is it okay for us to even entertain the question of is it even okay for us to experience joy right now? I have so many that have reached out to me and said, Pastor, we find it really hard to even put up Christmas decorations right now because we don't know if we're even going to be able to see our family. Some of our beloved members have found themselves in the hospital right now. Those that have found themselves now under quarantine. I mean, imagine being under a 14-day quarantine, and this is five days to Christmas, and they're not able to see their loved ones and their families. Think about all the things that threatens to rob your joy this season. Not only do we find ourselves in the midst of a global pandemic, let me repeat that, global. Regardless of where we find ourselves, and what we believe about this disease, it is global. And I'm hearing from Methodist missionaries in Africa that entire communities are being devastated right now because they don't have the health care resources that we have. We find ourselves in a divided America that is so politically divided right now. People are lashing out one to the other, taking sides. We find ourselves in a racially divided country. We find ourselves in a socially divided country. Our children find themselves in the midst of division. Some are worshiping online. Some are worshiping in class. And what I'm hearing from so many of our parents is that they're experiencing children being placed in quarantine right now because of the virus in schools like we have not seen so far. It is spreading that rapidly. It is okay for us to provoke the very difficult question, is it okay for us to experience joy this season when we see so many around us are struggling with having joy in their lives? And maybe this is not a new question. Our lectionary scripture today takes us, I believe, to the heart of this issue. It comes from Luke chapter 1, beginning in verse 26. When Elizabeth was six months pregnant, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a city in Galilee to a virgin who was engaged to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David's house. The virgin's name was Mary. When the angel came to her, he said, Rejoice, favored one, the Lord is with you. She was confused by these words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. The angel said, 
Don't be afraid, Mary. God is honoring you. Look, you will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of David, his father. He will rule over Jacob's house forever, and there will be no end to his kingdom. Then Mary said to the angel, How will this happen, since I haven't had sexual relations with a man? The angel replied, The Holy Spirit will come over you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the one who is to be born will be holy. He will be called God's son. Look, even in her old age, your relative Elizabeth has conceived a son. This woman, who was labeled unable to conceive, is now six months pregnant. Nothing is impossible for God. Then Mary said, I am the Lord's servant. Let it be with me, just as you have said. Then the angel left her. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. It will help us this morning as we reflect on this scripture that we have probably heard countless advents before us. But I want us to stop and look at it a new way, and it will help us to understand a little bit of the context that this scripture emerges from. I mean, Mary, Mary is probably a teenage girl at the time, engaged to be married to this carpenter man by the name of Joseph, which both of them were from Nazareth. Now, in the Jewish culture, the engagement was binding. It was legally binding. In other words, they were both committed to the marriage. If either one of them decided to step away, it would require a divorce, even during the engagement period. And neither one of them could forsake the vows that they would be making in their marriage, even during their engagement. Now, what I say to this is, for Mary to come up pregnant, to conceive a child during her engagement would be considered an act of adultery from the community around her. Even if that child was Joseph's, she and Joseph would be considered guilty of the act of adultery. At the very least, Mary could expect Joseph to silently dismiss her and send her away. Divorce in, in their culture. At the most, Mary could have been persecuted and even executed by the people in her community. I mean, do, you, do you realize how serious this was? When an angel appears to her and says, Mary, you are going to conceive and bear a child. And she says, how can this be possible? I want you to see all of the world, the weight of the world, resting upon her shoulders and hearing these difficult words. How would others see her in the community? I mean, we know even as Jesus journeyed back to his hometown of Nazareth in his ministry that people still made little statements about him, challenging his legitimacy. You remember when he went back to his hometown and he, he read the scroll at the synagogue and they said, who does he think he is? Isn't that Joseph's boy? That was really a, a dig at him. Would Joseph see her the same way? Would her mother and father see her the same way? How would the community treat her in this difficult time? And what we find is that Mary said these wonderful words. She didn't say, let me take some time to think about it. She didn't say, let me see if I can 
understand this. She didn't say, let me go home and consult my parents. Let me talk to my husband-to-be. She didn't say, let me give it some thought. She said, let it be with me as God wills it. I am your servant. Now, we oftentimes look at this scripture in a way that this points toward the servant that we all need to be in our lives. That we need to be so much like Mary that God's will can be done in our lives. But this Advent time, I see this a little bit differently. You see, Mary was also emptying herself, emptying herself of all that would stand in barrier between her and God, emptying herself of the worry of what others would think of her, emptying herself of the fear of what would happen to her, emptying herself of obsessing over the judgment that would certainly come her way from her community. She emptied herself of all that stood in opposition to God's will, and she emptied herself so that the joy of God could fill her completely. As we struggle in these days leading up to Christmas and beyond, what do we need to let go of in our lives? What do we need to empty ourselves of to allow God to fill us with joy? And let's turn the question around. Not necessarily where we find our joy and how we experience joy, but let's ask ourselves this. How am I giving joy to others around me? How am I giving joy to a hurting world? I mean, right now it seems like the train, the judgment train, the condemnation train is really long. And it's so easy to jump on board right now, point fingers and, and ridicule. But how are we giving joy to a hurting world? How are we giving joy to our neighbors? How are we giving joy to our family? How are we giving joy to one another? We oftentimes see this scripture in a way that we reflect and say, you know, I need to be more like Mary in my life. I need to be more of a servant in my life. I need to be able to let go of what the world thinks, of how others feel, of what's going on around me, and allow God to use me as a servant and to work through me. But I want us to see something else this season. Is God speaking to you right now in this moment in the same way that God spoke to Mary in your heart? Is God wanting Jesus to be born in your life, in your hearts, in new in exciting ways I mean my friends I want you to hear the good news this morning we may find ourselves this year in the very place where Mary was and is allowing God's Holy Spirit to fill us allowing the Holy Spirit to overshadow us allowing Jesus to be born into our hearts as a wonderful gift to a hurting world How will we respond when the angelic voice of God whispers in our ear? We may say, how is that possible, God? The world is hurting so much. How is it possible with all that we see in the world around us? But we hear that voice whispering in our ear, reassuring us in our hearts that nothing is impossible for God. When Jesus 
can be born into our lives and into our hearts. And that new birth is something that changes this world because it transforms us and it transforms our families and it will transform the world. What a different way we look at Advent this year. And what a different way we see statements that we have always perhaps taken for granted. Like, come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Lord Jesus, come. And the people of God said, amen. Please join me in the hymn of response. We will sing low how a rose are blooming, verses one and two. Please be seated. My friends, I invite you, as we look at the generosity that surrounds that, us to share that with a hurting world this Christmas season, and we need your help to finish this year strong. I was overwhelmed at the amount of food, the amount of toys that were given at last Sunday's food drive and toy drive to benefit the Wilkinson Center. And I'm moved at the enormous amount of coats that are on our coat rack outside these doors to benefit children at risk at Dandy Rogers Elementary School. I wanna thank you for your love and your support as so many in our community are hurting. And I invite you to continue to support your church. We continue to be a moving presence in this community. And there are three ways that you can give today. You can give online. You can give by text message. You can also mail your gift to the church. For those of you in our sanctuary, you may give in the giving baskets located in the rear of our sanctuary. For those who are looking at taxes at the end of the year, you can make an IRA contribution. You can also make a stock contribution. 
reach out to me. I would love to share with you how. So let us ask God's blessing upon this offering that we take. Holy God, your love is magnified in the gift of your Son, whom you so freely share with us. Bless these gifts that we offer to you to lift up the lowly and fill the hungry in your coming reign of justice and peace. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
us in our closing hymn, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. Sisters and brothers, it's been a blessing worshiping with you today. I hope you have been blessed by our time together. One of the most meaningful things to me in worship is to see our acolytes bring in the flame and take the flame out. The flame symbolizes the spirit of Christ among us. And as I just watched Hope take the spirit of Christ from the sanctuary, Symbolizing to us that the Spirit of Christ goes into the world. There is our mission, my friends. May God's joy be born in us. And may each of us look at ways to take that joy out into a hurting world. So that those to whom love is a stranger in these difficult days find in each of us warm and generous friends. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. Thank you so much to the four Cross of Zion Anglican Church. May it be your four vision and dress the church. Gray and white or green or black. Whatever green or black or blue or gray or brown. Whatever makes you happy. Christmas. Christmas. Thanks, you guys. Do your homework.